Hey, thanks for tuning in to the show. This video is from our live show exclusive on odds.com. If you want to see the entire thing, make sure you click the link below. Head on over to odds.com, check it out, and let's make that cash. All right, all right, all right. Kay Hansen taking on Corey McKenna. This one's a spot where I'm extremely uncomfortable on. So Kay Hansen is everybody's favorite little prospect coming in here now. She is seven and three grappling specialist, but she is so damn green on the feet, man. She is so green on the feet. She shoots in without setting her takedowns up, and she has yet to actually pay for that, but she was well on to uh, losing her last fight until she got a Hail Mary submission over Jin Yu Frey in the third round. She does mix up her takedowns pretty well. She's creative. She's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu purple belt. I think she got to the UFC too early. I mean, I know she just beat Jin Yu Frey, so you can't really argue that point. She got a win over a notable girl. But I think I think the sky's the limit for Kay Hansen. She can do a lot. She can do a lot of good. But she's just not quite there yet, in my opinion. She is going to have a five-inch reach advantage in this fight, which is going to be absolutely something that matters. Corey McKinnon on the other side of this thing, five and one, less experienced than Kay Hansen. So she's going to be dealing with the exact same issues that I have with Kay Hansen. Um, she comes from Team Alpha Male. She is also a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu purple belt. However, she seems to be a little bit better at wrestling based on her tape that I have seen. It's hard to tell. She's fighting a very low level of competition. So maybe she is not the better wrestler, but coming out of Team Alpha Male, they are a bit heavier on the wrestling aspect of things. You would think that she would have a, uh, okay, Alex, that's a good note right there. She's got a history over at ATT as well, apparently. So I, I think she's going to be the stronger wrestler of the two, but Kay Hansen may be the better jujitsu artist of the two, even though they're both purple belt level. So I don't know. I think this is going to be a scramble fest or what you get sometimes is when, um, when you get two fighters that have a similar skill set, they avoid it. This might be the sloppiest, boringest striking match we have ever seen because neither of them really want to take it to the ground. It's entirely possible. Um, but it also could be one of those ones where they scramble for the first two minutes and someone gets choked out immediately. This is the definition of a fireball and popcorn spot, in my opinion. Just pass. Just take this one off. It should be fun to watch. Should be entertaining, hopefully. We'll cross our fingers there. But you just don't know what you're going to get from either of these girls. They've got so much room to improve. Leaps and bounds could be hand could be had between each fight for each of these women. So no idea. I, I don't want to discount Corey. K is getting a little bit of the rub because we've seen her once already in the UFC. She's a minus 225 favorite right now. And I just think that's a little bit too much of a price to pay. At the same time, I don't want to roll the dice on Corey at plus 185 on the other side of this thing because it's really just a dart throw shot in the dark type of thing. K's bigger. K's got the reach advantage. We know she can submit a fighter like Jin Yu Frey, who's a you know lifelong martial artist. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and pick Kay Hansen. I'll say Kay Hansen wins, but I would caution you for like, you know, parlaying her or doing anything crazy like that.